Welcome to the CIS 190 lab walkthrough for lab 11427 file system commands. We're going to use the CLI command line interface to manage files and folders in Windows. Uh, the first step is always to log into the machine I'm using the Windows 10, Windows 10 machine, which is PC1, and then find the command prompt application. So we log in, ITE password. We're click. Go down to the start, type CMD, and enter. And we come up with this uh, command prompt. All about typing here. So first we're going to be using the change directory command, CD. We're going to make directories, MD list directory, DIR, the dir commands. Later we'll also be removing directories and moving, renaming files. Right, so directories and folders, they're the same thing. They're containers for files and for other directories. And the, the lab warns us that the words directory and folder are used interchangeably throughout the lab. So we have the command line, I hit return, nothing. Just gives me a new prompt, this is prompt. First step is to type CD. CD with no arguments on Windows will tell you what directory or folder you're in. C colon backslash users backslash ITE user. And we, that's what we're asked. What's your current directory? Dir lists the contents of the directory. It lists folders and, and files. This one only has folders. It gives you some other information like creation date, time, maybe last access date, I guess. So now it wants us to make three folders. So you can see these are the folders that are there. We're going to make a folder using the MD make directory command. I'm going to make ITE folder one. If you do a dir, there it is. I'm going to make two more folders, two and three. So MD, ITE, folder two, and also folder three, which we can do on the same line here. A dir to check. There they are. Uh, CD, we're going to change directory into ITE, folder three. Which folder are we in now? Well, it shows us right on the command line where we are in the tree, which is super helpful. And then you can also type CD. It'll tell you which in Linux, PWD. CD without a, an argument in Linux will take you back to that home directory, whatever your home directory is. So if you want to know what directory you're in and not regret things, you would type PWD, but not in Windows. Next step, we're going to, so we are in ITE folder three. Look, we do a dir, there's nothing here. So we're not in this folder, we're down below. We're in three, and it has nothing in it. But we're going to make another folder within. So ITE folder four, there. Then it says within ITE folder four, make another folder called ITE folder five. So we're making a nested directories. And there are several ways you can do that. We could CD into ITE folder four, where there's nothing, and make the directory. We could also, well, this will talk about it later. We're going to go back up. Now I'm back in three, where folder four is. And I can actually do MD ITE folder four slash backslash IT folder five. And check that out. There's still only folder four here. If we ch change directory into it, folder four, there's folder five. So we could have made it in here, into folder here, and it would have been the same thing.
And it does ask which command or commands did you use to create the nested folders. Do whichever way you want, you get to just list which you did. So now it says change directories as necessary until you're in IT folder five. Well, we're already in folder four now. Now we CD to folder five. And you can tell we're there. Look, we do a dir. It says we're, the prompt says we're in five. The dir shows empty. Great. Then we CD dot dot, which I just mentioned up there, to change the current directory back to the previous directory. And that might be a little confusing in the instructions because it's like type CD to change. You don't usually vocalize your dot dots. This is just two periods, dot dot, means one up, one back to the previous directory. Each dot dot is a shortcut to move back up one level in the directory tree. Now we're, you can see we're in folder four, we were in five, which is what it asks. After issuing that command, what directory you're in now, it's right there on your prompt. And then what direct what would be the current directory if you use the cd dot dot command from us users t ite folder four? Where's a total typo right here? Pretty sure they want you to say where you'd be if from where we are now you want to go up one. Folder four is in folder three. And so if we did cd dot dot, where would we go? Folder three. You'll notice this typo here. If this were true, if there was this folder as written, exactly as written, if you did cd dot dot, you'd be in c, c colon backslash users. You can explain that, or you can answer this. You could answer, uh, yeah, I don't know. There are a few errors in this uh, instructional doc. It's all for your edification, though, and the errors are not, uh, don't prevent that. So now we're going to create text files. Navigate to back up to users, te, ITE user, and to ITE uh, folder one. So we're going to go up. Make sure we're where we thought we were. CD ITE folder one. All right. Well, that's one way. I did did it in two steps. In the instructions, it says just CD dot dot backslash ITE folder one because it would have taken us up and back down. And this will do the same thing even though we're not in folder four anymore. We'll still be. It just takes us up and back into folder one. And now to make a text file, this is the easiest possible way to make a test text file. You don't have to open Notepad or anything. We're just going to go echo, which will repeat what we have to say. If I say echo hello, it says hello. We're going to say echo. This is doc1.text. And then the greater than sign, which is really a little arrow that points right to doc1.text. So this is the text we're putting into this file, redirecting it right there. We hit return, nothing happens. Gracious, that's correct. If we do dir, there's doc1.text. And then we're going to do the same thing to create these other these other uh, files. We're going to say this is doc2.txt into doc2.txt. Echo, this is file1.txt into file1.txt. Echo, this is file2.txt file2.txt. Now they're all here. You can always, dir is always a nice safe where, you know, wh where are we and what's here kind of command. 
more and type both just print out the contents of text files. So if we say more doc1.txt, say type doc2.txt, it's all the same, doc2.txt. You can see it's printing out what's in, in those files. That's what we echoed into them. Step four, copy, delete, and move files. Uh, so we're going to, okay, we're going to move doc2.txt to a different directory, c colon slash backslash users, ite user, backslash it folder two. And uh, over in Linux, you'll be using forward slashes. So this is going to move this file, that file, to here, to, to this directory up above. One file moved. We moved it. It's gone. It's no longer here. And now we can navigate to fo ITE folder 2, which is ITE folder 2. There we go. Dir. Hey, there it is. And we can even do more doc2.txt. That's, that's the file we made. It's... All right, so from here, we copy it to a copy of it. Copy doc2.txt to doc2 under bar copy.txt. Now there's two of them. Check it out. If we do this, type to underbar copy.txt, this is doc2. It's the, we've made a, an exact clone, a direct copy. They are the same, they have the same contents, they're two different files. <clears throat> then we're going to move doc2. Copy. I wish I wouldn't put my cursor right where you can't see. .txt to the ITE1 folder, which is up ITE folder 1. One file moved. We could also, so we moved the copy. Now all we have is the, the one that's not called copy. But we can copy that one, doc2.txt, to, let's see, I'm going to type the, uh, the whole path just because it says to, user, it's a lot of opportunity to get typos, folder 1, doc2new.txt. I have to call it something different or it will give an error, which would be fun to try. Copy it. I can't find it because I probably typoed some of the users. I go up arrow allows me to now use other arrows to edit the line above. One file copied. It's good to check when you do a thing whether you get an error. If you're doing a lot of commands and you typo and you're not paying attention, zero files copied. It can look a lot like one file copied, but it can be very sad when it's not really there. Uh, we did the copy. One file copied. It's not here because we moved it to ITE folder 1. And we scroll. The file doc2 can also be moved to a new location with a new file name. We're going we're gonna to move it. So it's here. We copied it. Now we're going to move doc2.txt to dot dot into ITE folder one doc2. Now the instructions here say to put it to doc2 new.txt. We're going to find that that's asks us if we want to overwrite it, which is not intended here. We're going to say no, start over, no files moved. I'm going to use the up arrows and change this to .move.txt, which is what 
they show in the little black part that shows the actual command. Get to the end, hit return. Now it's moved. If we do a dir here, it's gone. So, but if we wanted, we can actually look at folder one, ITE folder one, look at all those doc2 files. And I did, I did a relative up using the dot dot. I could also say dir c slash e. I hate having to type it all out and that's folder one. Same folder, relative versus uh, words. Um, absolute. <laughs> so I've used the relative path versus the absolute path. But in any case, we haven't left folder two. But now we will. CD. So it's a CD dot dot at the prompt because somewhere along the way, I may have thought folder two ended up in folder one. See here? But it didn't. I think that a lab got mashed together. We're not going to worry about this because it all works out fine. We're going to go into ID, ITE folder one. Move file one dot txt and file two txt. So that so we can do it, but this way. <coughs> Excuse me. You can put both on the line, I think. We're supposed to be moving these into folder uh, three. You cannot put both of them on the line. This is a problem when you're very used to uh, one shell and you go to another. I'm, I'm used to Linux shells where uh, it just works differently here. This also works in Linux though. File star, move everything called file to a different directory. They moved them both together. File one, file two are gone. And if we do a dir of fo folder three, there they are. So then we're going to view the contents of doc2 new.txt by doing type doc2 new. This is doc2.txt. We're going to rename doc2 to doc3, doc2 new.txt to doc3 using the ren command for rename. Although I do point out, it says rename to doc3.txt, but it actually wants it to become file.log, and that'll be what it asks for next. So we're going to rename doc2 new to file.log. And then we're going to type or more file.log. That's doc2.txt. Didn't change the text, just changed the File name. All right, then we get a question where you get quizzed. To delete a file or multiple files, use the del command. So up above, we used to move two files, multiple files, we used file star. I guess I'm trying to scroll and not seeing it. This is live, folks. Okay, it's not. So what single command would you use to delete all files named with with doc2 in the file name? And how you ought to be able to do that 
we use the del command and say doc to star. Now, now there's no doc twos. See, there were doc twos. Now there are no doc twos. We deleted doc two, and then the star means anything after that. The star matches everything. We're getting there. What command would you use to delete all the files in the directory? Use that command to remove the files. Hmm, what might that be? Maybe del star. It says, are you sure? It's, it's as if it thinks you might not really mean you want to delete everything, but we do. Everything's gone in ITE folder one. All right, step five, we're going to use xcopy and robocopy. Uh, in this step, the xcopy and robocopy commands are used to copy the content in a directory. So we're going to view ITE folder three. And then we're going to X copy everything, ITE folder three. Uh, it does note that you need a dot at the end of this command. I believe you do not, but I'm going to. Dot means this directory. So X copy everything from there to here. You absolutely need that over in Linux. Hit return, two files copied. Now remember we deleted everything from fol folder one, but now there are two files, the same ones that were in folder three are now here. So then we just, I just did type the dir to display. I would love, I, I'm always typing dir, but I should do it here and not in the document file. Where were we there? So that's our fold, folder one. Only the files that were in ITE folder three was copied. If you remember, when we looked at three, there's also was a folder that was not copied. X copy without anything else, just copies the files. So there's ways of getting help, right? We have X copy, we can say help X copy gives us a bunch of information. We can also say X copy slash question mark. And it gives us a bunch of the same bunch of information as help. I'm gonna make this a little bigger, scrolling up. So these are a bunch of options that you can use, switches. So we're using the help to figure out which switch would let us copy the files and the directories. And we're gonna look and you kind of have to scan, let's see, slash a only files with the archive attribute set, m only files uh, with the attri file archive attribute set and turns off that attribute when it copies, blah, blah, blah. Oh, skim, 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 something about directories. Here we go. Ooh, slash s would copy directories and subdirectories except empty ones. And slash e would copy directories and subdirectories, including empty ones. And can be used to modify T, which creates a directory structure, but doesn't copy the file. So T only apparently copies directories and keeps them empty. So I think what we would want to do is X copy slash, what was it? E, because we want to get that empty directory. So X copy E, we're getting it folder three. So dot dot ITE folder three. Now at this point, it's asking if we want to overwrite because we already have file one, file two. We're going to do that, file two. We do a dir, and now we also have file uh, ITE folder four here. 
And so it asked which option allowed us to copy it. Because ITE folder four is a subfolder and ITE folder five is both a subfolder and an empty folder, I guess folder four right, wasn't empty, slash E is needed to copy it. And so we did that. We just, we, we jumped ahead and copied everything in folder. So now, well, now we have ITE, we're in folder one. We copied folder four from folder three. And if we look inside, folder four, dir folder four, we see folder five. And that's how we're verifying that. <clears throat> we could also type tree. It'll show us where we are, folder four, folder five below us. Tree is cool, not included in this lab, bonus. A uh, robocopy command also used to copy the contents of a directory to a new destination. It has more capabilities than copy and xcopy because it can stop if, if you're doing a huge copy from an, another machine, from a networked machine and the network dropped, you can resume it. Um, you could have it skip files that appear identical, mirror directory by keeping them in sync so it could just be running its robocopy. So we're going to copy uh, the contents of ITE folder four up to the user file folder. So from folder one, we get to say robocopy slash E. I get to type out the whole absolute path, users ITE, user ITE folder three, ITE folder four, two, users, ITE, user. Zoom. Wow, it tells us a lot of stuff. And so now we're going to go up cd dot dot. Now we are in the user directory and we say dir and folder five has shown up. Right there, because we copied the contents of folder four, which was folder five. Finally, we delete everything we just did. There are various things about deleting fol folders, directories, especially because if they are not empty, if you want to ins you. If they're not empty, you want the, def the default is to not let you delete it. Because it's like, there's stuff in here. So we're going to use rd, remove directory, ite, folder2, deletes that empty directory. That was folder2, two. folder2 two now gone. Now we're going to go into ite folder three and we're going to say the same thing all right we want to get rid of folder four right ite folder four <clears throat> the directory is not empty and it it didn't just tell us that and delete it it didn't delete it so rd let's look at the options for rd slash s there aren't a lot of options slash s removes directories and files in the specified directory in addition to the directory itself. So it will use to remove a directory tree. So we should be able to do rd s ite folder four. Warns us, I am sure. Now folder four is gone from folder three. We then are asked to use the appropriate commands to delete all the text files and folders that you've created in this lab. So we're going to go up, back up to the user where everything here is. I'm going to say rd slash s it. Let's see if we can use that uh, wildcard it e folder star. 
Are you sure? I'm sure. You cannot. You, you could in Linux. IT folder 1. Yes. RD folder 3. Yes. I'm going to use up arrow to delete folder 5. Yes. And now they're all gone. And we use exit, quits the program, and we are done. And the reflection question, that's going to be on you. What the advantages of using the command line interface versus the graphical user interface. And it's not asking why GUI is better. It's asking why CLI is better. And there are, you should be able to come up with some ways that it is better. And I'll uh, see you later.